My friends, you know, I think it's, it's tragic how so many people call themselves Christians. And yet they go on day in and day out without putting the Lord Jesus Christ into the routine affairs of life. I remember a story I think I may have told you before about Gypsy Smith that uh, said one time that uh, he went out to uh, a dinner somewhere and uh, something said that uh, they didn't uh, ask uh, for Jesus' blessing upon the meal or something like that. And uh, the woman said that uh, something about she overlooked asking the blessing for some reason, her attention was diverted, but said, uh, I put Jesus into this meal. See? Now, you know, uh, if she told the truth, she did a very wonderful thing. Because the Bible makes it plain what we Christians are supposed to do. We're to put Jesus in everything we do. He's to be in our married life. He's to be in our home life. He's to be in rearing of our children. He's to be in business. Now, let me use these words. In Colossians, uh, third chapter, 17th verse, we read, And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. That's all inclusive. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, that's what you say, what you do, whatever you do. And do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. Now, here's another verse back in 1 Corinthians. I want you to notice it. 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, 31st verse. Whether therefore you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Now, you know, if we Christians, I really mean the real Christians, the minority of Christian people. God's crowd's always been a minority, never a majority. The devil has to have a majority to succeed. You know, we read in the Bible that one can chase a thousand and two can put ten thousand to flight. Uh, what we need in this country uh, to have the kind of country we ought to have is not so much more Christians, it's a better quality of Christianity. That's what we need in America. Better quality. Real Christians. Christians that will do right, let it cost what it may. Christians that will take a stand, we ought to take a stand. That's the need of America. That's where we're weak. When you think of the early church, how Paul and his crowd went out and turned the world upside down, just a little group of them, they were consistent Christians. The trouble with most of us, we just don't live it, that's all. We say, I trust Jesus, but we don't live it. Now, these two verses I read to you are written with a pen of inspiration to Christian people. Now, they were human beings just like we are. Remember now, we all have this treasure in earthen vessels. But the moment I trust Jesus Christ as my Savior, I step into a realm. I become a child of God. We are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. A man is not a child of God if he is born again. God created him. But no sinner has a right to call God the Father. Because the Bible is perfectly clear that we are children of God by faith in Jesus Christ. As many have received him, he gives them the right or the power to become children of God. Now, uh, I come to this world, I'm an innocent little baby when I'm born. Well, of course, we know that a baby is saved if he dies, because we know that God wouldn't send anybody to help what Adam did. God wouldn't send people to help what Adam did in the Garden of Eden, see. But when we grow up now, the age of responsibility, to offset that, we have to be born again. Except the man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. If you haven't been born a second time, you're not God's child. You can go to church today and pray the Lord's Prayer, our Father which art in heaven, but you're not talking to your Father. Jesus Christ makes it plain that men who are not Christians are their Father the devil. You're your Father the devil. Now, that's hard to take in, you know. You know, so many things we pick up and go thinking along, you know, through the world, and go ahead and discuss it, and so on. And strange about it, isn't it? And then we don't stop to realize what God said, what he said to Paul. Now, we do all we do for the glory of God, whatever we do, whether therefore we eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. That other verse is uh, to do it in the name of Jesus Christ in Colossians, in the name of Jesus Christ. A thing that you can't do in his name, you're not supposed to do. You're not supposed to give money to the devil in the name of Jesus. If a man's hungry, you can buy him some bread. When you take your money and give it to a cause that isn't a Christian, a cause that doesn't give Jesus Christ his rightful place, you're not doing what you ought to do. You're doing wrong. You shouldn't do it. You should know where your money goes. 
Now, you know, I just seen you this morning. I came in. I, this, I'm not talking politics now. This is not a political message. But I thought as I came here this morning, how many people are going to vote in the coming elections? Not long as coming. An election that may have settled the destiny of America for years and years. And how many people are going to walk up to the poll and just vote uh, as a Democrat or as a Republican instead of voting as a Christian? See? Now, just think of it now. They say, well, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. I've always been a Democrat. I've always been a Republican. And I'm going ahead now and vote Democratic. I'm going to vote Republican ticket. What for? Well, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Republican. Well, did it ever occur to you when you walk up to the poll to vote that you suppose vote as a Christian if you're a Christian? Whatever you do in word or deed, in word or in deed, whatever you do, you do all for the glory of Jesus Christ. Now the question for you to ask when you go to the battle box, say, now, Lord, I want you to guide me. I want to vote like you'd have me vote. I want to vote for your glory. Now, that's all covered here. And if you go and vote, uh, don't vote for the glory of God, it's pretty bad business, isn't it? Now, what would you do? It's all right to use your head and say, what's the best for our country? What's the best for our relation to the world? But as a Christian, you might ask, what's the best for our Christian testimony? What's the best for our Christian opportunity? What's the best for any plan we have? Now, that's not politics that I'm talking to you about this Sunday morning. Politics in America is a part of your life. Every citizen in this country has a right to vote. And I'm not telling you to whom to vote this morning. But I'm telling you about a principle that holds here. And you know one of the saddest things that I've found as I've gone up and down the country, I've told this before, up north I find that uh, good Christian people nearly all vote one way. And down south so many of the Christians every four years vote against the best Christians of the north. Something wrong somewhere with our Christianity. There's something wrong. We pick up prejudice along the road. We do this, we do that. You know, uh, it says, If I and I be single, thy body is full of light. Thy body is full of light. Say, how many things do you do based on prejudice? How many people you don't like a fellow, you won't trade with him? Well, there might be some base you're not liking him. But, you know, uh, we sometimes read, If thine enemy hunger, feed him. If you thirst, give him drink. You might do something for a fellow. You might heap coals of fire upon his head. Now, I don't mean that you to forsake your friends. I never have mine either. But we ought to analyze our motive when we go out and do a thing. You just don't uh, go around a fellow because you don't like him. Well, that's your right in America. You've got a right. You've got a right to trade with a man you won't trade with. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe you shouldn't trade with him. But let's base our decisions in life on the principle set forth in the Word of God. Now, I'm talking to Christian people. I'm talking to you Christian people. Did you know uh, it's not so hard to become a Christian when you really want to be? But you know it's pretty hard to live a Christian life. Now, wait a minute. I can be saved in a second of time by trusting Christ as my Savior. He died for me on the cross. He was wounded for my transgressions and bruised for my iniquities. My sins were laid on Him. Well, I can come to him a poor lost sinner and in simple faith trust him as my Savior and I become a Christian, become a child of God. I'm not a child of God up to that time. The soul that sins it shall die. So you're dead in trespasses and in sin, the Bible says. But the moment you accept Jesus Christ, you become a new creation. You become a new creation. Now, your citizenship is then in heaven. You would live like a citizen of heaven or to live. You ought to talk like a citizen or talk. Uh, you ought to act like a citizen ought to act. You know, I've told you before, I've been in foreign countries where a lot of Americans were there. And I've seen some of them reflect on America by the way they did things. I've been on boats crossing the ocean. And in some airplanes, too. And I've seen American citizens carrying on like American citizens. Well, they were reflecting on our country when they did it. You know how that goes on. You know what I'm talking about. All right. Now, did it ever occur to you as a Christian with citizenship in heaven that you have an awful responsibility. You to live like a child of God ought to live. Uh, you ought to be the sort of person you ought to be. You ought to live the kind of life you ought to live. I sometimes wonder if we put enough emphasis on that. That's not Phariseeism. Now, there isn't any problem that you have in life that you can't find out about. It. Now, what is it? Taking the question of politics and government and all that. Uh, you ought to be a good citizen. Every Christian ought to be a good citizen. That's forever settled. We should let our light shine in this world. 
We should be good citizens. And what else? Well, we should render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, to God the things that are God's. We should pay our taxes like a Christian ought to pay out his taxes. We should do our duty. A Christian's never an anarchist. Jesus Christ lived up to the law. He was God manifest in the flesh. All they said about him was uh, not in line with anything he was. said he wasn't a friend of Caesar's. They lied about him. He was a friend of Caesar's. He came down from heaven to the earth. He was the son of God. And when he came to him, he told him to render to Caesar the things of the Caesar's, to God the things of God. You've got a duty to your home, a duty to your government. You've got a duty to your business. Why, there isn't anything that you have. Be diligent in business, he says. A man that lets his business run along slowly isn't doing what Jesus told him to do. Jesus said the children of this world are wiser in their generation than children of light. I know some businessmen who may be run a better business store than some Christian, maybe nearby. The Christian ought to beat the businessman and run this store. I get so tired of people get the idea that a man's a Christian. This well, he's just out of the running. He isn't. You know, people talk about sometimes our school out here. We tell our students and faculty, if we are what we claim to be, we ought to run the most efficient school in this country. We ought to have the best business system. Everything we do, we're working for the glory of God. Don't let your good be evil spoken of. Whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all for the glory of God. Now, you are not supposed to, as a Christian, do anything you can't do in the name of Jesus Christ. And, where therefore ye eat or drink, you're not to go out and be a glutton, or eat or drink, whatever you do, or whatever ye do, now that's all inclusive, do all to the glory of God. Now, we have an election coming in this country pretty soon. Great many people are going to vote on prejudice, go up the polls and say, well, I'm a Democrat, I'm a Republican, my fathers before me were, you see. Now, you're a Christian, aren't you? Well, when you walk up to the polls to vote, that's one of the all things in your life. What all things in your life? You'd use your head, you'd be sensible, but you'd vote for the glory of God. When you go down to the bank and deposit money in the bank, you'd deposit that money in the glory of God. That's one of the all things. What's ever you do in word or deed? If you're a Christian now, this is written to Christian people. Some of them weren't very good Christians in this church at Corinth. Some of them weren't living right. But he wrote it to them. And it's written to you too and to me. It's applicable to all Christians everywhere. It's a standard set up by Almighty God. Written with a pen of inspiration. Now anything that you can't do for the glory of God, you shouldn't do. All right? Now whatever you do, in word or deed, any cause you can't support. Now this is all inclusive. What you ever do in word or deed, what you give your money to. You ought to be careful about where you give your money. Are you helping the cause of God or the cause of the devil when you give money sometimes? Now, if a man comes to you hungry, that's all right. If feed him if he even he's your enemy. But you know, Christian people are so careless, they just give their money in this sort of way. They never stop to think about it. They never stop to weigh the thing and say, this is not the best way to do it. Now, let's get this word. Let's get hold of us. It's the 31st verse of the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians. Now, you write it down and remember it. Whatsoever ye do, whether therefore ye eat or drink or whatsoever ye do, do all to the glory of God. Now, how about this Sunday morning saying, I'm going to start in. If I can't do something for the glory of God, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to vote for his glory. I'm going to do everything I can for the glory of God. I'm going to put the Lord Jesus Christ in all my affairs of life, my social life, and everywhere else. Oh, if all Christians would do that, what a wonderful world we'd have. Our Heavenly Father, help us Christians do like we're told to do and live like we're told to live. And keep us faithfully in all things for Jesus' sake. Amen.